You're listening to the DSW Podcast with James Ledger. Christ so, welcome back to the Disability Sport Wales Podcast with me, your host, James Ledger. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about disability sports representation within the media and how that might have changed over the years. I've got a great guest today. I've got BBC journalist Peter Gillibrand. How are you doing, Peter? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, good, thank you. We're getting ready for the um, the Winter Paralympics now. Well, to, to watch it all the way from uh, from um, from the other side of the world. But uh, yeah, excited. And thank you very much for inviting me on. I'm, I'm very privileged to be here. No, no, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you uh, giving up your time. I know you're... Uh, you're a very busy man with uh, numerous of things going on. Well, yeah, keeping busy, keeping myself busy. Uh, there's nothing like it. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Pete? Yeah, so I'm Peter Gillibrand. I well, I was born in in Bangor, then I moved to down to Carmarthen. <laughs> so I'm I, I, I'm Welsh through and through. Uh, you know, speak Welsh. Shout out to uh, uh, I'm fluent, uh, bilingual, um, and yeah, I work for the BBC as a journalist. I'm a, I, I read the news on BBC Radio Wales, um, and um, and yeah, yeah, just all the journalism for uh, for, for 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 the BBC in Wales. Um, and prior to that, I was with um, a, a company called Global, so that's Heart Capital, Radio X. Uh, Classic FM, LBC, all of those, um, and I had a sort of I, I played a, a big role, um, and I try and uh, play a big role in in getting disabled representation, especially when it comes to sport on the radio. And and um, I've been passionate about that because I have a, a an autistic brother. Um, he's in full time care, um, non uh, verbal up to a point, two hundred words ish. Uh, I think that might have gone up during lockdown, which is good. Um, but he used to love riding horses and riding horses uh, developed him so much. And, you know, he, he's an amateur. And, you know, to him, it, he was really good at it, I, I thought. Um, but I guess this is perceptions of of disability, isn't it? it, it it's that there isn't just one disability. My experience stems from from a, a, a an autistic brother who who. Um, I, I guess one would say severely autistic, but I know a lot of people in the dis- disability community don't appreciate that language. Um, but you know that that is what I, I I've known him as, you know, non-verbal, and he he, he loved it. He loves riding horses, painting. Um, you know, and and it, yeah, this is a topic that we're going to raise today: is comparisons between disabled people and non-disabled people. That's not helpful. In in his little world, he. He, he was, you know, he was the best at, at what he did. Um, and that's why I'm really passionate about uh, disability sport. And that's why I'm very privileged to um, be able to come on this podcast and share my enthusiasm. Because even though myself, I'm not disabled, um, you know, I, I try and uh, get representation in the media. And I always try and look after my brother because often uh, he can't look after himself, um, really. So I've been before journalism fighting for him. And now it's time to take that sort of battle for representation. Maybe I shouldn't call it a battle, but, you know, making sure that it, it was one of the reasons why I went into the media um, to, to, to hear more uh, dis- more more disabled voices, to get them on the air, because, you know, I, I think the, the stat is that one in five people are, are disabled and we want to see ourselves in the media. So it's very important to, you know, what I'd call fight the good fight. I, lo- I love that. And that's what, and your, your passion really kind of comes through. And I am really excited to get into this discussion because I know you're going to have fantastic insight into that. So you know, Pete, from your perspective, how far do you think, you know, the perception of disability sport and the, the wider disability community ha- has has gone over the last few years. Do you, do you think that's improved? It's hard to quantify it, really. It's hard to you know put numbers on you. You, you know, there there have been numerous um, studies done, and, and I really need to you know read um, a lot of them. All I can speak of is from my general experience growing up with uh, a disabled brother. I and I think attitudes are changing um a lot you know we we often say 2012 you know the 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 games in some respects things have improved some in some respects things um 
things, according to some studies, haven't done as well as 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 one would have thought. I think we've got to separate Wales and England. I, I think Wales has achieved a a, a, a very um, positive change, especially recently. And and speaking from my own personal experience. Um, you know, I know, say, Welsh Athletics are trying to do more. I've personally done the visually impaired runners um, workshop. So I, um, once I get my leadership qualification, I, I'd be able to help out in that way. And it, I think it's the little things. And we're speaking, we're recording this the day after St. David's Day. Um, and at the moment, I think his words uh, are very special in this context. You know, do the small things. Um, and it's these little changes in the way we uh, give uh, do sport. The the way, for example, I didn't need to go and do that visually impaired guide runners workshop. I did it. I loved it. And now I've been able to potentially give an, a, a, a further opportunity. Um, and it's all about providing opportunities, which have, according to the statistics in Wales, increased dramatically, um, especially since you know the start of the uh, of the of the noughties. So I I think things are improving uh, i think awareness is is definitely there um and we we just need to make sure that it's not based around these flashpoints of the 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 games you know everyone always thinks about the paralympic games we need to make sure that things um are continually talking that it's always on the agenda i mean the paralympic games do a fantastic job of getting it on the agenda but you know if we look at the say what's going on now why you you know the the winter paralympics that that are coming up how much has that been in the media apart from the fact that russian or belarusian uh athletes i think can compete at the time of the recording um i i i've hardly seen anything about it um and we know from studies that people want to see more disabled sport in the media um I can't remember what I think it was a comrade study. It, I I can attribute it to anyone who, who wants to know. Um, so I think in terms of it all, we we know that people want it, and things are getting better. But I think we do have a, a long way to go. And then also within that, we need to make sure that, speaking from a media point of view, that we're We've got the right language. Language is very important in these in 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 these uh, in this context. I think, for example, in the Paralympics, you often have this what's known as super crit mentality, uh, and I hate using the word crit, but I think that's what it's called in in studies that we're making out that these Paralympians are superheroes, which they are. Don't get me wrong. You know, anyone who can, for example, you you sprint very quickly you're a super anyone who runs you know super fast is a is a superhero but it's this sort of stereotype that they're overcoming their disability to do it no they're heroes in their own right you know it's we shouldn't be comparing to able-bodied people um and i think that is where the next sort of battle lies i i, I think it's the language and it's very hard to get everyone in a newsroom or sports department interested in the language around disability sport. I know there have been numerous style guides done um, and, uh, and yeah, journalists want change, um, but it's about, yeah, pushing for that really. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And if we're looking at kind of, uh, well, let's look at the when, when the Paralympics, for an example, and we had a little bit of a, a chat uh, pre, pre-recording about the classification system and how, off first glance, how complicated that can seem. Um, you know, is this something we need to, you know, as, as everyone really to, to help make more power sport accessible to everyone to understand? Is this something we need to kind of highlight and educate around the dis- different classification system just so people see, will see, you know, okay, T11, that means this, or T20, that means that. Um, do you think that's something that would kind of increase um, uh, viewing viewing rates or, or kind of increase that representation in the media if people can understand it better? Yeah, definitely. I, just to start that with a few points you raised, I think broadcasting definitely does has a, have a massive role in disability sport and disability um, awareness and understanding in um, in general. And we know how disabilities are portrayed during these Paralympic events is how society it has a massive impact on 
on society. Um, and I know some disability campaigners may say, you know, you can't just play the awareness card all the time. But from my point of view, I think it's been super important. You know, I have an autistic brother. We used to take him around the supermarkets and, you know, uh, someone would be like to my mum, control your control your son and she'd start crying and it's because people don't understand so I think yeah. not, you wouldn't get that now at all um, and it's not because we're some you know you'd have right wing commentators being you know oh, we're all snowflakes or whatever um, no it's because people understand more about autism you know mm-hmm. autism awareness and understandings probably the, the most it's ever been right now um, due to various factors um, so I think the media definitely does ha- have a role to play and I know going back to the classification question um, uh, Channel 4 who have a 100% disabled presenting lineup. you know I, I really look up to um, Adi or, or, or Aid, the, the Paralympic uh, basketball player I, you know I, I grew up watching him he's, he's a um, he, he's a broadcasting legend um, yeah. now, you know he, he's always around the Paralympics and Channel 4 have done a fantastic job I remember doing the Olympics of trying to uh, discuss the classification um, system, but it's just such a, I think it's complicated. Um, and I guess I'd speak for potentially gen- the, just the general population. I, I think that understanding of the classification system is needed. And for example, with rugby coverage, they do a fantastic job, you know, being a rugby fan and a quite awful rugby player. Uh, i mainly social rugby, don't get me wrong, I, I barely play. Um, but, you know, they're they they, they they're trying to grow that sport as well, um, speaking sort of rugby, and they're trying to, you know, grow para rugby, uh, wheelchair rugby as well. You know, we're, we're hosting it in the Principality Stadium, the um, uh, one of the championships. Um, it was brilliant to, to see how they're changing the Principality um, to, 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 to be accessible. Um, but they had little tutorials about how to scrum what a lineup was trying to grow the game in that way and i yeah. think you know just a little channel for channel four is the main provider of paralympics um yeah we'll, we'll also have it on the bbc i need to plug that as well but i really look up to channel four as a broadcaster um because they do a lot with disability but little snippets of what does this classification mean um and I think it stems to online articles as well, because not everyone is, especially if the Paralympics or Olympics are all the way to the other side of the world. You know, I was up at three in the morning watching it at one point, which not everyone's going to do, admittedly. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think it, it does stem down to, yes, let's get focus on the athletes um, and what they're doing, their background. Um, but let's also sort of get, a bit more about classification. What what exactly does it mean? Who are they up against? Yeah. Um, but then you you've got to think when you when you're in journalism. What what do people need to know? Are you going to clog their brains, and then they might get a bit turned away by disability sport because it's too complicated? So I think it's a fine balance. But I think it's little snippets, little nuggets of knowledge um, that that can help. And it would definitely help me um, as a journalist. I, I you know, I, I know disability sport, but the classification system still, yeah, d- I, I don't understand it uh, fully. Uh, maybe I shouldn't admit that. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming I've been in it all my life. <laughs> it's still confusing to me sometimes. But um, you mentioned a little bit there about almost creating role models. You men- mentioned Adi Adapten. Um, how important is that? kind of disability representation on TV. So, you know, example, we've had Rose Ailing Ellis on Strictly lately. We had Alex Davis on SAS, Who Dares Wins. You know, we've had Holly Arnold, Kadena Cox, and I'm a Celebrity. How important is that for, you know, that disability representation to be on that in primetime TV shows? Well, I think to start off with, with Rose, she made massive shockwaves, massive shockwaves in society. I didn't realise that many people watched Strictly. I know it's a very popular <laughs> show, but, you know, it was all over um, the reactions coming through. Um, but going back to sort of the, 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 the main point, um, people from my talks, and I've covered a lot of issues, disability, sport and disability, and in my personal life, talks with people. People want to see themselves in the media. Um, and I can't get this enough. As I say, one in five estimate uh, are disabled. Um, and 
more people will participate if they see themselves doing it. But yeah. what I mean with that, um, you know, there's a, um, a model with Down syndrome. Um, the name doesn't isn't coming to my head right now. Um, but she was on the Adidas advert um, the other day. I, I was watching it. Well, it's been going for a few months or whatever the campaign is. And, you know, it, if her, from what I gather, obviously speaking from a non-disabled person if a person with down syndrome saw themselves in that advert you know not only would adidas pay off with that for a little change again very little change it doesn't hurt to get a, a model with um down syndrome you know she's beautiful like you know any other person yeah, um yeah. but if a down syndrome person you know saw themselves in it they will then take part or buy that product potentially so in terms of sport seeing these Paralympians who not only are they role models in you know where, where Holly Arnold uh, with, with with throwing Alex Sean Davis massive um, character and you know he was on SAS yeah who dares wins um, you know people look up to them and and from what I gather you know people with a disability um, might then go hang on a minute I can do that um, and it's it, it's important as well to. And I think society is changing a lot. Um, yeah. It's that, you know, we're not we're not talking in the there's this constant debate with the medical model and the social model of disability. And I think a lot of people in the media, um, and I'm not slating them, it's just society and how we've grown up. Um, I use the medical model that, you know, their impairment causes them. They have to overcome it, um, whereas we need to go. You know, hang on a minute. So the social model means that potentially society's got some barriers, and it's about breaking down those barriers. I think I've understood that correctly. Um, so I think it's yes, we've got the role models, but we need to make sure we're talking about them in the right way. And I think language, as I say, is really important. But I know, for example, going back to the sort of model with Down syndrome, my colleague in the BBC, Rebecca, um, she did a fantastic story about a model in Swansea who's just been signed to a to a big label so you know it, it's getting these these role models in in filtered into um into the media um but yeah in terms of the actual what's happening with these paralympians we can't just we have a problem in the media that once we find out that someone's in a certain subgroup in society disabled um or or, or whatnot we we only go to them for um for just say say yeah uh, to say we, we only go to them for to talk stuff about disabled issues but hang on a minute no they, they are disabled but i'm sure they have a valid opinion on anything else um so i think that's what's sort of happening in a distorted kind of way that we're not just seeing these people for paralympians even though that's where they got their success we're seeing them as you know potential celebrities and and people who are really going to inspire by coming on this on these shows um and uh I, yeah I, I think it's great really that people are seeing themselves in the media um and i'm uh, i'm sure there's countless disabled people in wales or the uk looking up to these people i know i'm not disabled and i look up to say you know alice or tani gray thompson's a hero of mine um yeah. she's doing she's probably the most prominent voice in 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 sport not just disabled sport in I know that she was giving um, evidence to the CNF uh, or a pre-appointment hearing for for, for Sport Wales, um, and I look up to her. You know, wheelchair racer. She she's brilliant. You know, she talks sense. She's not just talking about disability sport. She's talking about sport in general because she's got valid views about it. Um, so I, I yeah, in that respect, I, I I do think it's great to see. And just going back to Rose, you know, just the shockwaves that made is, is, is immense. And um, again, 100% disability presenting team for Channel 4's Winter Paralympics coverage. I personally think that, think that's fantastic. Uh, some people might disagree, um, but, but you know, they've got the experience and, and they do it, um, do it well. So, yeah. Exactly that. And, you know, Channel 4 have been, I guess, I guess you said that the, the leaders in, 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 providing para sport to the UK for, for many years now. And, you know, shows like The Last Leg as well have really, I felt personally, have really kind of broken down some barriers and and made it okay to ask questions. I think for me, that is something that always needs to be talked about is, is 
is not assuming and and having a conversation with somebody to 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 get clear more understanding of people's situations so i think yeah the shows like the last leg were really kind of um champions for for doing that and breaking that kind of social social barrier isn't it yeah the last leg is fantastic you know adam hills is is hilarious um and the you know the fact they've come together as disabled people and they're talking about everything and it's just a little hook and i, I try and watch it you know on on um whenever it's on because i i kind of feel it sometimes myself when i'm say i'm reading the menu in a in a, in a restaurant um I, I'm lucky now technology's gone so well that I take a photo and zoom in uh, to see the menu, but I used to look extremely close to the menu. And I've always sensed that maybe people would be thinking, well, what's he doing? Is he, is he like checking his eyebrows out in the menu or something or, you know, trying to smell the menu. But um, I feel like now people would be okay to ask the question. Um, and I think shows like that have created that opportunity to do that and ma- made it be okay to ask yeah, no, yeah, you, I, 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 yeah. As you said that, I, I remember my point. I think some uh, the awkwardness is becoming less and uh, and less, and that and that's good. I think people are getting a bit more potentially showing that society is a bit more comfortable than than what it was. I know, you know, for example, when I had my when I was growing up, with my autistic brother, some people weren't that comfortable with his autism, um, mm. w- which is horrible, actually. Um, thinking back you know people just get a bit like oh we don't know how to handle him or or, or whatever um and it would stress my mum and, and and dad out and I think it's good that people are asking questions I think it's important as well for us as broadcasters not to feel awkward about these questions obviously you don't want to ask a horrible anti-disability question that's that you know but just whatever you feel comfortable with and in years gone by I think we have some people certain people have felt awkward about uh talking about disability but i it's good that we ask questions i think it's very important that when we're talking to say an athlete we need to ask them how they want to be represented in the media as well um i know some people might have thought sort of oh it's just a um why would i ask that because i'm just interviewing someone but i think based on the 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 representation in in media um i think it's it is important you know what is your disability um and i was you know you don't have to tell me the full details but you know what is your disability and 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 um yeah it's important to 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 get their views on how they want to be represented rather than assuming that it's okay to say they're this this and uh, uh, and that um and it's yeah just opening these the, the 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 questions about how their trainings going as well not just about you know obviously the yeah asking various different questions about you know disability sport in general and I think that's how we how we grow it you know exactly no that's that's great and this is a big question um what does disability sport mean to you um (laughs) I've taken more of a prominent step in the direction of disability sport recently um, because, you know, Adam, um, who isn't very well at the moment, actually, my brother Adam, uh, he did a lot of horse riding and I know it developed him so much. Um, and disability sport for me is, it you know, it, it develops people. It really does. It brings them on leaps and bounds. You know, my, my brother's autistic, but, you know, his confidence grew um in in a way we didn't think was possible through you know various sports um and doing it in his own way and i i I think it's about you know giving opportunities to people that might not have those opportunities um and that isn't meant to be a sort of pity thing it's just you know i I definitely felt this with visually impaired running and learning all about that you know there are a lot of clubs that that don't offer a, a a service and i i just you know there are who have come to me a lot of people with the visual impairment that are a bit nervous to start running because they don't have anyone to do it with them just by changing little things in society we can offer these opportunities get more people fit you know i think it's i was just looking at stats before this interview 17 percent of disabled people play sport once a week compared to 40 percent of non-disabled but seven in ten 
disabled people want to live a more active lifestyle. So there is that desire for people to get fit. And you kind of ask yourself a question, you know, why is it, why aren't people getting out there? And the honest answer is, you know, society has barriers that we need to help break down. Um, and to me, dis- disability sport and especially disability sport Wales is about breaking down barriers in collaboration with people like Welsh Athletics who are putting on the visually impaired guide runner workshop. Um, it, it's, it's about potentially thinking about not just in the uh, amateur and professional game, but things like rugby kit clashes. What can we do to sort of change people who, who are color, uh, change people's viewing for colorblind? It, it encompasses us, you know, as I kept mentioning, one in five people are disabled. So that's an awful lot of people potentially wanting to go out and, and achieve sport. And, you know, it's about equality um, and if the media can help, you know, in any way, and I think it's got a massive role to play from a more professional um, element. Um, you know, we need we need to start. There's an awful long way to go. You know, things have gotten better. You know, God, before my time, but if we think back to the sort of eighties, nineties, potentially potentially early two thousands, you know, it, it, I I I I wouldn't have thought there would have been a lot of coverage on the on on the television. But now, you know, the the latest Paralympics has been one of the biggest, most watched Paralympics of all time. Um, so society is changing. People want to see more, more disability sport, um, and it's our job to to provide that in a in a in a positive manner um, that doesn't stereotype, and that's very important. Um, obviously, it's very hard to change society all in one go, but you know that's what it means to me. And if I can be that a part of that revolution and that change, you know, revolution's coming long long may it continue yeah I, I love that and I know you know people like you paving the way is just going to create that kind of shift in media to you know provide that change for society no I absolutely love that so Pete my final question what advice would you give you know disabled or not people who maybe start in their journalism journey whether that may be journalism or, or sports gym, journalism what advice would you give to those people uh it's a question i often get really um in terms of the disability section i'd, I'd swat up on on disability sport um there are numerous guides online about language used how we portray people um and i think you know it, it's just a little thing to add to your arsenal that you, you you know you have got the awareness and the understanding of disability sport in the media and the role we can play as broadcasters you know it'll only take a you know an hour um i'd maybe maybe a bit longer depending on your reading speed of course um you know there are plenty of guides online um and you know you can especially in sports, I think you can bring that up and say, you know, hopefully this interview has given an insight into my passion. Um, maybe get a passion of your own. Go to that interview, show that passion. Don't be afraid to show that passion. You know, if, if an interviewer sees, don't obviously don't go over the top, but if an interviewer sees you're obviously passionate about something, you've obviously got drive. You're not just, it, it, it makes you stand apart from another um, journalist. And and I think, you know, us as as journalists we have to have that passion that drive to go to a news meeting or whatever and say i want to i want this to be you know covered you know we've got paralympians who who deserve this coverage we've got amateur clubs potentially um you know why you know an editor always asking you know, why is it important why do people care you know so why people care um come 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 to that interview or, or or meeting with 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 a reason um in terms of you know getting into journalism i think it's just about you know casting your net wide contacting people linkedin is a fantastic resource twitter um getting in contact with them and uh, and you know showing interest um unfortunately it's the world of journalism sometimes you have to do a few bits of unpaid work but um it's you know i've had to do it a lot of people i don't necessarily agree with it but it is it is what it is um and you know i i think yeah twitter is fantastic um go and cover stuff with passion, you know, learn from best practices. Even if you haven't got a job, you could at least, you know, make shock, make shockwaves in, in social media. I try and always post, you know, little snippets of disability sport. And I'm fully aware I've got a, a, a job and I've been a, a journalist um, uh, for, for three years, but, you know, cover people, tweet about them. Um, you know, I've, I've been 
tweeting from say Aled Sean Davis all the way down you know from a, a professional level to to Michael Bain on the first person with Down syndrome to run the London Marathon you know he's fantastic he's got his own business he's not just you know I don't just go to him for 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 an interview on disability topics I also go to him for business uh business topics you know he, he's got a little Welsh cake business um so yeah and as I said in this interview I think it's important not to just categorize people um you know we want disabled people on the air, air but not just to talk about disabled topics there might be you know various well as I just mentioned you know say business or or you know disabled people don't just have opinions on on disability um and it's important to realize that you know not everyone will identify as disabled despite the the, the census results or whatever um you know one in five of us you know if you go into a a room obviously this is very simple statistics one in five is going to be disabled obviously it depends on various factors but that's just generally what it is and um and yeah it's our job to to get those people on air um and and, and cover them so in terms of if you're a student or or a or a or a aspiring journalist just keep going it might seem like you're hitting walls but something good will come as long as you've got that passion and i think it's that drive and passion that got me where i am um and good um make sure you've got a good network you know i i'm very fortunate to be very good friends with people in disability sport wales not just for my journalism but because you know i'm interested in it um and that's what journalism is it's not just a job it's you know what are you interested in and also what other people are interested in so try and maybe use your own personal interest for you to, to shape your journalism like my brother's done um that's the reason i went into it just to get more disabled people in the media well one of the reasons but um yeah just keep going and, and i'm sure um I'm, I'm on twitter if anyone wants tips i was going to say pete what, what's your what's your social media handle so people can uh, stay in touch with what you're doing and, and see how you conduct your passion yeah, um, I'll usually only respond to this kind of stuff on Twitter. I keep my Instagram a bit. It's public, but it's not for those kind of things. Um, it's at Gillibrand Peter, G-I-L-L-I-B-R-A-N-D-P-E-T-E-R. Um, so if you follow me, um, that would be awesome. And no, that's a plug. I don't want that. Uh, just message me. You can follow me if you want, if you like my stuff. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a lot to come from Disability Sport Wales, so I'm sure I'll be posting about that in the uh, in the coming months. Like the the wheelchair rugby championships in the Principality, hopefully I'm going to get accredited for that and uh, and and go along. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to plug him because he posts some fantastic things. But yeah, go follow him on Twitter. He's 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 amazing. But no, Peter, thank you so much for for joining us on the show today. And you know, on behalf of myself and everyone at Disability Sport Wales, we thank you and. Uh, Wish you good luck for the many exciting things you've got going on uh, ahead in the in the future. Yeah, I've got plenty to do. I've got London coming up in October. And then uh, I've, I'm, I'm doing my 20th marathon this this uh, this year, hopefully. I've done 16. Uh, so at the time of recording. Um, so, yeah, no, it's all about just keeping on going. And I like to fundraise for Mencap, who do amazing things with um, disabled individuals as well. So... I'm all about fundraising for for disabled individuals um, and to make sure that they get all the help and advice they need to to flourish and hopefully then go into get the confidence to go into go into sport. You know. No, mate, good luck and and thank you once again, and thank you to those listening and watching on YouTube. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the latest episode of the Disability Sport Wales podcast, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Hi, I'm Peter Gillibrand and you're listening to the Disability Sport Wales podcast.